His name is Joy Vaughn Alexander. He's amassed 11,500 followers on Instagram and more than 12,000 on TikTok. I trust my son. Yeah, I met Joey Vaughn uh, four years ago at one of my Beachview Advanced Quarterback Camps. Uh, I actually had one of his previous trainers, Rob Delfino, work my camp, and so he had brought some Ocala kids, uh, introduced them to me before my camp, and we had already talked on social media and stuff. And uh, once he brought Joey Vaughn out, you know, obviously at six years old, he stood out at his age group, and ever since then, man, we just built that relationship, but it definitely was at my Advanced Quarterback Camp about four years ago. Rob Delfino was his first QB coach. He, he passed away a couple of years ago. And Alexander, he took it really hard. I remember one day I found him in his bedroom. His door was locked and when I opened the door, um, he was there crying. And I knew that uh, Rob had made a huge impact in his life being his, his, his first QB coach. And that's when Coach Balin came into the picture and brought Alexander under his wings. Commit for this week. Well, tonight he has his training. Yes, his Co nine. He's got his class. Keep okay. BYQ at nine. And then tomorrow I will take him to practice. He has practice, what, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday this week? Yeah, but we don't have to go on Tuesday anymore because Tuesday's defense. Okay. So okay. Monday we will leave. He after school, 345 to Orlando. So you're picking up, picking him up from school on Tuesday? I mean, on Monday? Yep. Okay. Tuesday, no football practice. So Tuesday he gets a day off? Mm-hmm. Okay. I believe Wednesday he gets a day off too. Well, unless he does the one-on-ones yep. with the private trainer. I so. want to do, I want to do, I'm going to try to do either Balin on Tuesday or Balin on Wednesday. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put it here for now for Wednesday, uh, Tuesday with a question mark. But are we going to do both that, um, Balin and the private trainer or no, one or the other? just one. One or the other. So I'm just going to put private session or Balin. And I put them both for Tuesday. That way if I need to move it to Wednesday, I can. Okay. Hello, my name is Lucian Jimenez and I am Joyvan's mom. Joyvan came into this world flying at an 18 minutes flat, shocked me and everybody, um, and he has hit the ground running ever since. He was born with a natural love of football, which just birthed from him. We may have persuaded him a little bit. Um, I stamped him a Gator fan at birth, go Gators. Made sure he had nothing but Gator stuff touching him from the onesie to the hat to the pacifier, blanket, everything. But um, we were very blessed that um, the love for the game just came naturally from him. Did you sleep good last night? Yeah. I hope you went to bed early like I told you. Uh, not so early. We're like 30 minutes late. You, anyways, I just hope you're rested so that you're not tired when we get out there on the field today. No, I'm not energized. All right. And you've been drinking enough water? Yes. Ma it's gonna be really hot. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Sure. What is your goal for today? Uh, two passing touchdowns and over 100 passing yards. Okay. You plan on running the ball today? Yes. I want 30 yards. Oh, wow. That's a good goal. 
Remember what I told you about when you decide to run the ball? What? Tuck it and go down. That's it. right. Tuck it. Commit. We're going to run and run. If you feel like you can throw it after you ran a few yards, fine, but don't forget to tuck it and run like you mean it. Knock people over, okay? Mm -hmm. You said you want the turkey in your eggs, right? Yes, please. All right. Smells good. Thank you, thank you. All you right. put cheese in it too? Um, no. Cheese can be a little greasy, and you don't particularly like cheese. No, not really. I know you don't. Not specific, specific types of cheese. Mm, but you don't like cheese in your eggs. Make sure you give everybody the pep talk at the beginning, okay? Mm -hmm. They feed their energy off of you. You're the leader, okay? So you gotta make sure you go in there pumped and ready to go. Okay, they see you all mopey. It's gonna rub off on them, okay? Mm -hmm. to our bodies, Lord. Let us just have a great game today, Lord. Let us come out with the W. Let us stay safe during the game, Lord. Let us have a great day today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. You ready? All right, remember, repeat after me. I can do this. I can do this. I got this. I got this. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. And if I make a mistake? If I make a mistake. I learn from it. Good. All right, I'll take some heads off. recently recreated a video from Tom Brady posted on social media and it's gone viral. An NFL coach, Brad Johnson, he messaged him on TikTok and I was like, wait a minute, this guy's a Super Bowl quarterback. If he commented on this video, it means that there's something special here. Clinton Hart, owner of Healthy Arts Fitness, retired NFL player living here in Ocala, Florida. So how long have you been working with Alexander? A year is on and off. Uh, he's had some great mentors and great coaches you know, all around. This kid is uh, an amazing kid. I've, I've been able and blessed enough to have him in my presence and, and throw with him, catch with him, and see some things. Because I was a quarterback in high school too, so and I've seen some things right away with him. That, you know, just stand out. He, he's bar none the best young, probably better than throw the ball better than a lot of high school guys right now. Um, but he just has some about the way that he spins the ball and he does things, his, his technique, he's very fundamentally sound. Initially, what would you say is the first thing that impressed you about him? His humbleness, you know, he's very quiet. He don't say much. Uh, I like that in an athlete, don't do a whole bunch of talking. Show me what you can do. When he started playing football, he was seven years old. Uh, I believe he was his coach, uh, either Wayne Hopkins or Coach Herb. They could fight about it, but they couldn't say Joy Vaughn. So the easiest thing was to call him Tua. I guess they said he looked like Tua. So everybody started calling him Tua. And then when he got on ESPN, I think Tua just stuck. And everybody calls him Little Tua now. And um, it's just been hard to stop. We might change that really, really soon so they can really get to know him. But toward that name just went viral. What, ha what would you say has been the biggest challenge of him being a quarterback? Oh, man. You know, um, playing the quarterback position is a really, really expensive position. It takes a lot of money for training, personal training, camps. Um, it's, it's a lot of money. We're not, we're from Panama, we're not rich. But we know that God gave him a talent, and we really want to sow into, into his abilities. And that's where our, our whole family comes together, because everybody, they pitch in to help him pay for cams and to travel and 
hotels and cleats. Um, the other part I would say is as hard as there's a lot of hating in this game. You know, you encounter other parents that their kids play quarterback and everybody wants their kid to be number one. And there's just a lot of hating on social media. And um, I've even gotten messages how, how the competition is. I think it's part of the game, but there's just a lot of hating when it comes to playing the quarterback position. What would you say is your dream for Alexander? You know, it really, it really doesn't matter what my dream is for him. He's got to have his own dream. But as, as his parents, you know, we definitely want him to get that free education, a great education that he doesn't have to pay for, or us. Um, we also know that my wife being from Puerto Rico, me being from Panama, you don't have a lot of Latino, Spanish quarterbacks. So we know that him playing this position at the highest level is going to make history, especially for, for our country. Guys, uh, last thing I'm going to leave you with is this. Be the best preparer for your opponent than anybody. Be the best preparer for your opponent than anybody. Don't walk into that game or that game week not knowing who you're facing and expect to see them on the game day. You young guys, sometimes you don't have game film. I get it. That, that part I get. Um, but most of you guys have a chance to see those guys. Hola, mi nombre es Delicia Jiménez y somos de Panamá. Eh, inmigramos a este país en el 1992. Y este es mi esposo. Hola, yo soy Dario Jiménez, esposo de esta doña y padre de Joyvan, abuelo de Joyvan Alexander. Somos de Panamá. El gordito. Como dijo su coach, él es muy quieto, él es calladito, él no, no habla mucho. Lo que tiene que decir, él lo dice. Es muy, muy amoroso y le gustan mucho los Skittles y los eh, Star, Starbursts. Él le gustan todas esas cosas. Así okay. que cuando él y yo tenemos un lugar En, en la recámara mía, donde él sabe dónde yo le guardo esos Kittles, esos Starbursts o cualquiera de sus cositas y la mamá y el papá no pueden saber que eso está allí. So, cuando él llega, él me mira y él yo le hago así y él sabe que puede ir a buscarlo eh, sin que la mamá y el papá lo sepan. Lucien, what is your role as a football mom? My role as a football mom, my priorities are his health, to make sure he's eating right, especially on the days prior to a game. Um, even before practice, making sure he gets a well-balanced meal, that he's not eating too much junk food, that then he will later hurl onto the field. Um, my Obviously, before all that, um, as a family, our number one priority is always making sure we keep God in the middle of everything. God is first. He's the one that provides him with the talents and the abilities to perform in and off the field. Um, as a mom, I am responsible for making sure academics don't fall by the wayside. Um, and education is top priority because yes, football will open doors for him for his future, but you always have to have a balanced education as well. We don't want him to just be smart on the field, he's gotta be smart in life as well so that he has a secured future for himself outside of football. Um, and then also I create the balance of keeping it fun. It can't all be football. We have to make sure there's a balance, make sure he has time for his friends, make sure he has an escape and some downtime where he just gets to be a kid. Um, it can't always be football because, you know, we don't ever want him to get to where he resents it as like it takes up his whole life, never gets to see his friends. So I, I create the, the fun factor and making sure he has time not only for his friends, but to have fun with me as well. This morning we're going to learn a new Bible verse um, that you're going to have to memorize. It's Psalms 138, verse 8. This one, 
uh, read it out loud, and then we're going to talk about it. Psalms 138, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Good. Okay, so let's write it down first so we can memorize it. What is it again? The Lord will fulfill the purpose in me. His purpose. His purpose for me. Mm -hmm. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Just finishing His purpose for me. Say it loud so you can remember. Psalm 138. Okay. What does that mean for you? He will take my talents to the next level to help anybody in need. Okay, let's let's slow that down though. The Lord will fulfill his purpose in you. Like you keeping his promise? Okay. Why do you think his purpose is for you? Like break it down. Like his purpose in me is like to um, like to Make sure I can help people in any way that I can. Good. And then be the best person I can be. Good. Hola, mi nombre es Lucy Colón Amaro y yo soy la abuela. My desire is that he follows on his dad's footsteps. Not to minimize his mom, but because of the nature of his passion for football, along with his dad's passion for football, well, they're always together. And if you follow their Facebook page and any other um, apps, you know, application out there, um, I, I love that relationship they have. The time that they pass in the car and what he posts, what they talk about, and then what the expectancy of dad is about him he says no football we need to memorize this bible verse so i i love that and i pray that alexander continues one day because dad's not going to be around forever he's going to go to college one day and dad's not going to be there that all that that's been imparted to him by dad in those road trips and those nights at hotels may stay with him you know through all his life and then that it can be a life application in football in college marriage and on and on that's my goal because everything will just be extra if God is first I train a lot of kids I mean I train just alone in Central Florida over 250 quarterbacks and from all ages and spectrums from talent to people who's you know already been polished that I'm just cleaning up or college guys pro guys young guys but Training Joey Vaughn has been such a beautiful joy in the fact that I get to see the process between when he was six when I first saw him to now that he's 10. And to be honest with you, there's not many 10-year-olds at his age, one with his size, but two with his arm talent, his mechanics, and just his just the way he carries himself. I think that's what separates him from a lot of the guys in his age group is not only does he do things off the field right, but obviously the things that he does on the field that's just special. Um, but just overall, when you balance both and you can be able to figure out how to formulate yourself as a quarterback, both on and off the field, I think that's what really separates Joey Vaughn. So it's been a real joy training him and polishing him up. Just again, the last four years, seeing him consistently working. Now he just looks like the product of somebody that's just coming out of like a, a, a pro workout or going for a, a college pro day or whatever that case may be. You know, it's just fun to see that at 10 years old. I mean, not, again, a lot, of, a lot of kids that I see, they start at 12. You know, he's already got four years advanced before those 12-year-olds that I see normally that come out and start football because parents think that's like the age where they should start when they're way behind. But he's already got that since he was six. So now that he's 10, he's competing with these high school and college kids out here when I train them. And I mean, he's just fitting in right with them. And I think that's also what's helped him, you know, spring his development because he is competing with the older guys. And I'm not baiting him. I'm not treating him like he's a 10-year-old. He's treated just like he's a college kid or a pro kid, and he's training with those guys, getting the same amount of reps, and, and doing the same exact drills, getting the same terminology. I'm not dumbing it down with him at all. So I think at 10 years old, that's why you see him more advanced than a lot of kids his age. 